Now we are rounding the bases on a Thursday and Bryce Harper at the forefront. We have seen him on ballpark cam getting reps in at first base. Dave Dombrowski saying yesterday after the all star break your new first baseman is Bryce Harper equal parts interesting and awesome. We have talked about the fact that he is willing to do this. Yeah it's just insane. What do you think of the move. You know it's funny I remember when Freddie Freeman came back and moved over to third base for a minute. Yeah, I thought that was so that. bizarre, right? To be willing to do that and for he your He played team. it well. And he did okay. I think Bryce will be fine. I think the bigger thing for me, it's the domino effect of being able to get Schwarbs out of left field every once in a while, yeah. get him off his feet. Dave, I mean, he's playing left field every day. Mm -hmm. So you can kind of start to get him in a DH role. I think Dave Dombrowski is going to do something here at the deadline, go grab another outfielder. Maybe I was looking at it last night. I don't know who's available, but like a Randall Gritchick type player. Mm. to kind of play some D, play a corner outfield, be a veteran yeah. presence, something along those lines. The but same way how they you know, they were able to acquire Marsh. Kind of in that same boom. you know mindset. Yeah. But, you know, Bryce playing first base, that, I mean, he'll take to that pretty easily. I mean, he's a good athlete. I, I think that's actually a good move for him either way. What's you know, the most Al difficult position to learn? I mean, are there positions that are... I felt awkward at first base. Well, yeah. I'm well, invited over there. First, the first is not as easy as people think. Because you, you have to really have good footwork around the base. If not, you can get a little tangled up there. And But you really need good footwork over there. I played first thing. a bit, and it's it can take a... Is yeah. the pitcher picking over? If you've never done it, some of these guys, are they're throwing hot rockets. Well, but with the new rules, they can only throw over a couple times. Okay. So, but it's not just that. It's just it's the ground ball, and you're crossing to the pitcher to leading him, or if you got to make a throw with the pitcher running to first base, yeah. making a good throw for for them to be able to handle it. I mean, there's there's a lot of intricacies on first that kind of go unnoticed. Staying in that division, the New York Mets on the opposite end of the current spectrum where the Philadelphia Phillies, there are a bit of a role. The New York Mets, they are struggling. They have lost 17 of their last 23 games. They lost last night to the Milwaukee Brewers. The owner, Steve Cohen, met with the media to discuss the state of the team prior to the game. If you ask me, you know, would I have expected us to be in this position at the beginning of the season, the answer is no. But here we are. And, you know, hopefully we can right the ship and, and uh, I mean, listen, we have quality players. Uh, for some reason or another, they're not yelling. When we pitch well, we don't hit. When we hit, we don't pitch well. If you want to attract good people to this organization, the worst thing you can do is be impulsive, okay? And, and win the headline for the day and, not, you know, overall, over time, attract you know, you're not going to attract the best talent because they're not going to want to work for somebody who, who who has a short fuse. Can you say definitively that Billy and Buck will remain in their jobs through the season? Absolutely. And a shout out to the Mets for immediately after Steve Cohen gave his remarks, they, they brought out a puppy. Uh, yeah, so you could pet it before Buck Showalter came out. Yeah. I heard them say that. Yeah, it's a nice little distraction. I will say working in the media, I watched that thing cover to cover. Man, some of these, the media people, they, you're relentless with your questions. We, I, every you're relentless with your questions. questions. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You, you knew exactly what the guy was saying. He said, we're going to eventually hire a president of baseball operations. And he got 15 peppered with 15 questions about what that entailed, how that affected Billy Epler. I just, I mean, man, hats off to him for standing up there yeah. at an 80-game mark and, and wearing it like that. But I thought he couldn't have been more honest. I loved what he said about not being impulsive. Yeah. I love what he said about it's on the players to be better. Their track records assume they should be better. Yeah. But I didn't, really, I didn't think he had to do that. If you're a player in that Mets clubhouse, Alex, how, what, what do you make of, of the owner meeting with the media and hearing those comments? What, did you, what would you make of that? I, th I mean, I think it's a little bit of a wake-up call, but he's not saying anything that you, already, you don't know sure. already. Uh, in that clubhouse as a player. I mean, you're already, you know, trying to right the ship. You're trying to, you know, not only do better individually, but, you know, collectively as a team. So you're not hearing anything that you don't already yeah. know. Uh, but I think just the fact that he, he did that was trying to, you know, kind of have, you know, some sort of wake-up call, some sort of reaction to maybe try to try something different yeah. in order to try to right that ship. But I agree with you. It was, it's strange. Like, it you, don't, strange. you never see that. And he's got a massive feel for the roster. Yeah. Like, some of the things he's he was, in touch. He's in touch with, what, with what's going on. And as a player, I played in eight different organizations. When you have someone like that who's invested and, like, truly cares about the direction the team's going in, he's walking through the clubhouse, I, I, 
I would respond like to, to see it. Them. I love that. Yeah. yeah. Really? I love that. Yeah, you don't want to let them down. I don't want to let you down. Right. I'm an employee. I want to do, do it was the same goodbye thing you. in Detroit with uh, with Mr. Illich. The old man, like, he wanted to win so bad. And that was, like, the, the, the collective feeling throughout the team. It was like, as a player, you want to do it for yourself. You want to do it for your teammates. But we didn't. We wanted to win so bad for him. You're right. Because he had invested so much, uh, not only money, but time and effort into, you know, his guys. And that was the same feeling. Mm, the Twins in a better spot, but their manager wants more from them. They had a nice test against the Braves and their offense leaving a lot to be desired. 0 for 23 Ooh. with runners in scoring position. And Rocco Baldelli had this to say about their ineptitude at the plate. The truth of the matter is we were, we were flat and we made no adjustments really in the game almost whatsoever. And if you're going to call a spade a spade and say how it is, that's that's not good baseball. We got wiped this series by the team on the other side of the field, and uh, there, there's no way we can walk out of this with any any positives, to be honest with you, and that's, that's the truth. We have to make some really legitimate adjustments to what we're doing right now if we're going to go out there and, and compete and win games against uh, that team or really any other team. I mean, to be fair, the Braves are the best of the best, and yeah. they showed it sure. in that series. But 0 for 23 with runners in scoring position, he's not. Well, yeah, I think Ro Rocco's frustration there. Yeah, you're playing probably the best team in baseball, but it's 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 the energy, it's the effort. Like, yeah, you might be getting beat, but like, let's show some fight here. Yeah. Uh, and I played for Rocco in 2020. Like, when when you see that out of him, you I don't mean, see that a lot. Yeah, you don't. He is as cool and calm and collected as 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 any manager out there, any any person that I've ever come across. And I loved playing for him, but. For him to be that upset about it, uh, obviously he's extremely frustrated on how they've been playing. Yeah. And, um, you know, so, some of those guys are are, are struggling a they're bit in their lineup. They're all hitting 200. Yeah. It, it, Outside of one strange. or two guys, they're all. I mean, Correa, Buxton, these they guys got to get going. Ga Gallows, yeah. Outhouser, Castle, they've pitched. Highest strikeout rate in baseball. And I think for me, oops, I woke up this morning. Guess who's in first place in the Central? Whether you like the record or not, here come the Guardians again. Yep. Just figuring yeah. out a way. Yeah. Um, yeah, just take a look at the American League Central standings right now. Twins just a half game back. They are two games below 500, but definitely licking their wounds after uh, meeting the Atlanta Average Braves. offensive production, and the Twins run away with this division. Yeah. Good point. Uh, Davey Martinez of the Washington Nationals <laughs> has had quite a few days. Uh, he brought it bringing out visual he aids. He his money's worth. Post game. He got his he money's not. worth last night, and again, it was a base runner baseline issue. That was the problem for the Nets. I don't see where K. Bear Ruiz really could have We're gone. We're making up rules. That, I, yeah, so Davey Martinez gets run, and I think rightly so. He had a beef. But let's go through some of his recent dust-up, shall we say. <laughs> Falls down. That's dog. full Spider-Man mode a few days ago. That got him an ejection. All right, so you got that. And then this was the issue in Houston. He did not get ejected here. This is uh, unbelievable. But post game, he brings out the memorable color photo, From visual the aid World Series. to to state his case Love to, the, uh, to the to the sport of, uh, he, of the of he's public not wrong. opinion. He's no, not wrong. He's not wrong. In, tw in 2021, playing for the National, playing for him, he had a, uh, a surgery on his foot. Yeah. And he was in crutches, and he got tossed from the dugout. He couldn't walk, get out there. <laughs> but he he let the umpire know. Now, yes. we were talking great ejections guy. in recent memory. This was <laughs> in the this minor leagues. If you can't see this play, I can't. <laughs> so Start good. Army crawling. <laughs> Got him, grenade. <laughs> Boom. Now, uh, and he says, good night, everyone. Now, Alex brought this one up. Oh, Jim Leland, this. during God Bless America, <laughs> gets run. Look, look. Hey, hey, we got to stop. We got to hold up. Hold up. God yeah, bless I'm wearing you out again. Yep. Now, now, now let now me I'll give you where was I? <laughs> my, James but, Hoy too. but you know what? My favorite, <laughs> Lloyd McClendon, when he was managing Legendary the Lloyd. Uh, Pittsburgh Pirates, <laughs> he says, you know what? Taking Your it. call was so bad here at first base, I'm taking it with you. <laughs> because you do not deserve to have a base, sir. You do not deserve oh, to have a base. Man. Uh, here's our hitting coach in Detroit. We talk about that all the so time. Good. Loved it.